<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and if you have a jailbroken PlayStation 4, I'm hoping you're going to be in for a treat here. I'm going to be showing you all how you can play some Sega Saturn, yeah, of all systems, Sega Saturn games on a jailbroken PlayStation 4 using Saturn FPKG. Now, just a few heads up before this here. First of all, this does require a jailbroken PlayStation 4. So this does require that you'd have the system, you have the basic knowledge of jailbreaking it, how to access it, how to, you know, just basically run it here, as well as running HIN, Gold HIN, Mira, however you're going to run the jailbreak, having that already running so we can install and play our Saturn games. We're also going to need some Saturn games in bin Q format which I'll show you how to back them up and on top of that it is worth noting that this actually requires at least firmware 9.00 for a jailbreak at the moment while I'm recording this this software because of a limitation of the emulator does not work on lower firmwares so if you're on a lower firmware such as 5.05 .05 or 6.72 this is not going to work. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and go over to our PC where we can get really the main stuff started here. Saturn FPKG is going to be the main tool that we're going to need. It is a Windows based application and it is by developer Jabu who has also worked on PS2 FPKG as well as PSX FPKG, which are tools which easily allow you to build fake package files from PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 games respectively for jailbroken PlayStation 4s. This person's done awesome work in the past before, so I was excited to see this here. The link will be down below in the description where you can download Saturn FPKG. Simply check out, you know, the change log and everything here, and I'm sure this is going to change in the future once you are watching this video, as there's just more updates to this software. But the main thing is going to be down here where you can download this. It's easy enough, just download the 7-zip file and you're on your way once we extract it. If you don't have any extraction tools, we can use 7-zip. It's easy, free, and it works well enough for this. So just download and install this if you don't have any tools to extract a 7-zip archive on your computer. Lastly, I'm also going to show if you have Sega Saturn games on disk, how you can back them up. I'm going to be using Image Burn for this because it works well enough and we just want to get them in bin Q format if they're not there already. Again, just download and install this. Now awesome, we should have Saturn FPKG already downloaded. We can keep this here because in this step I'm going to be showing how you can back up your Sega Saturn discs if you have them on hand. You will of course need a disk drive for this and we will have Image Burn here already installed. So I have a Sega Saturn game already popped into my DVD burner. What I'm going to do is once that's in there, open up Image Burn, go to create image file from disk. Once everything loads up here, we can just set the read speed to max. That shouldn't be an issue. And we need to select where we're going to save this game. Just click on the folder here. You can give this a name if you wish. That will make it easier to find. But the most important thing here is going to be saving it as a bin file. This application does require a bin Q image file. So if you have to select this, select bin file. And once you have everything saved, if you want to change this file name, that's fine. Hit save and then hit this button here, which will then begin reading the image from your disk. This will just take a few minutes. And here we go. Once it is done, as you can see, this took less than two minutes here. You can click OK and then you can exit out of image burn. It should be all good. Now I have a folder of Saturn games that I'm going to be working with here. And that's just as an example, but I'm actually going to delete this because this game is actually Clockwork Knight, which I've previously backed up before. So once you have your image file on hand, you should be ready for the next steps here. It is worth noting here before you go crazy packaging up a ton of Saturn games that compatibility might be iffy. You might still run into issues with compatibility of games on this emulator. And on top of that, this emulator only supports single disc games, which is why I've selected single disc games here. You can play multi-disc games, but you can't change out those discs. So what I mean by that is if you have a four disc game such as Panzer Dragoon Saga, you can only play one disc per package and you can't pack all the games into one package, so to speak. So they're not going to share that same save file. However, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and work 
on getting Saturn FPKG up and running. For Saturn FPKG, if you're using 7-zip, you can right-click and extract this out over to here or into its own folder. I'm just going to extract it onto the desktop. You should now get two files here, the Saturn FPKG directory as well as a readme.txt file. This readme is absolutely worth going over. It just shows how to quickly utilize this, important notes, some known issues here as well as a nice changelog between versions. So this does cover several nice things such as stating save states do not work with the 4 megabyte RAM cartridge as well as limitations with custom borders and even other features such as being able to hide a options prompt. So it's nice to just take note of this here before you run the application. Either way, once this is extracted, we can open up Saturn FPKG and open up the accompanying executable. It's a powerful little program that is thankfully pretty simple to use as well too. So here, let's go ahead and get started. For our disk, you're going to want to hit select. And here we need to look for our games that we want to convert. So the first one we're going to convert here is Clockwork Knight. You want to grab the Q file. These have to be in bin Q. And here you can select your cartridge. Now it states that the one megabyte RAM cartridge should work just fine for the most part. Although do note, if you use the four megabyte RAM cartridge, it will not allow save states. So I would really say here, don't utilize the four megabyte RAM cartridge unless you really need it and you can keep this hide options box enabled. If you want to customize this a little bit, the NP title is randomly generated. The title itself you can change by hand, but then for the title icon here, as well as the splash screen when you open up the application or the game here, you can customize those. For this, I'm going to customize the icon here. So I'm gonna click on select and I've downloaded the Japanese cover, which should work just fine. If anybody's wondering where to get these from, I've just been looking on Google Images. This one, I'm just going to use the default splash option here. Then in the game configuration, if you want to use an INI config file to customize this further for the emulator, you can. At the moment, there's not all too much documentation specifically for Saturn FPKG covering this, but there are two notes right here. If you want to play this game stretched out in widescreen mode, so to speak, you can enable this or disable this. You cannot enable disable it on the fly, so make that decision right now while you're building your package file. You could also enable or disable true transparency. I've kept this disabled by default here. And then these border images are if you want to have a border on the sides of the game while you're playing it. I'm going to choose to not have this. I'm just going to have the black bars on the left and right sides, kind of pillar boxing it. So that's all there is to it. And of course, shouting out the credits here to Jabu and K6 store, worth looking there. So once this is all set up and configured, you can simply click on create FPKG. This will allow you to click on a folder you want to save this to. So click on a folder hit OK, and wait. Thankfully, this process is pretty quick, so we're just going to wait here a few seconds and see how long it takes. There we go. Package created. That's all done. Let's go ahead and build a couple more too while we're at it. I'm going to do the same for Clockwork Knight 2, and I'm actually going to build this just to show you all that this game will not work. At least mine crashes here. So this is just an example of something that will not work, and maybe this can get tweaked in the future with other options on this. But if you want to wipe these out, for example, completely, you will have to close out a Saturn FPKG and reopen it, which we'll do that real quick. Since this one I know doesn't work, I'm just going to keep everything default here and not make it look flashy and create the fake package file. There we go, that one's done. We have one more game here I'm going to use for my example, and I'm going to pick Daytona USA. Not the fun, more complete one, just the original one that came out at launch that wasn't the greatest, but that's what I have here. So again, I'm going to go with the same options, but I'm going to select an icon which I've downloaded, as well as a splash screen. So this way I can show you all how they will all look. Once we have all that set up, we can create this FPKG as well. All right, that's all there is to it here. I'm gonna hit okay and close out of Saturn FPKG. Our work is done. Now I'm going to transfer these over to a USB drive to install on my PlayStation 4. For this, you will just need a USB drive and have it in either XFAT or FAT32 file system. Since we're on a PS4, just go ahead and use XFAT. There's nothing wrong with that, and it's great for those bigger package files. But either way, make sure it's formatted appropriately. And now we can copy out the files we need. So these are the three package files we built for our three games. I'm going to copy these out, and let's go ahead, just paste them into the root of our USB drive. 
Thankfully, this drive is fast, so it shouldn't take all too long. And these are small Saturn games. All right, with all that done here, they're all ready to go. So let's go ahead, come back out here, right click, eject our USB drive, and we're gonna take it over to our PlayStation 4. Over at the PS4, plug in your USB drive, make sure you have already run HIN, Mira, or Gold HIN, however you're going to jailbreak your system, and go over to the settings. If you're on Gold HIN, you can come up to Gold HIN, go to the package installer, and if you're not using Gold HIN, you can always come down to debug settings, game, package installer, whichever option you're using, you can just hit install all, or you can install individual titles and just wait. Again, thankfully this shouldn't take all too long. All right, and there we go, they've all been installed. So at this point we can exit out and check this out. We now have, this is quite a sight to see, Sega Saturn games on the XMB for the PlayStation 4. This is just beautiful right here. I'd say let's try out Clockwork Knight first, just because in my experience this worked out pretty well. So we have the custom icon, and if you just use a default here, it's going to look a little something like that. Now, once you're in here, you're going to get this nice prompt showing what you can do. So all of the buttons where they're going to be mapped and such, we can press X to continue out of this. And there's a few other options here as well. So this is just the initial FMV that's working, seems to play and work just fine. But if you press the touchpad on the controller, you end up getting this nice option menu right here. And here you can rewind, you can do quick saves, quick loads. I actually have a save from last time. You can adjust screen settings a bit if you want to. So this is where you can use those custom wallpapers if you choose to customize them. I didn't do any customization on here, but the default ones were just rolled in. Anti-aliasing, you can add that. The game settings as well too. You can actually change the button configuration here, and this is even two players. So you can do it all here. I'm just going to return because I'm not going to change that at all. There is a playing guide if you ever need a reminder there. And you can just quit out to the XMB if you want to as well. Again, you access this by pressing the touchpad on the PlayStation 4 controller. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip ahead here a little bit and load up the save data. Check this out, this is a quick save that I had made before, just here at the beginning of the game. I've already forgotten the controls, my lord. But yeah, this is working just fine, thankfully. So I've actually been pretty surprised with this one, at least for my initial testing, there hasn't been any issues with Clockwork Knight that I've noticed here, but it seems to look just fine, it seems to play without all too much issue, and I think we're all good to go on this. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. And there we go. Now, if you want a game that has the full customizations on there, for example, just with the splash and the icon, here's Daytona USA. There's the custom icon and we can launch it. As you can see, it launches real nice with that custom splash screen and doesn't look all too bad. We have the button configuration here, which you do have to press X to move on from. And then at that point, it should boot up the game. This one takes a little bit longer to load, and I've noticed that I've had a few games that just stay at a black screen, with one of them quite unfortunately being Nights Into Dreams. I did try my backup of that, and I could not get past a black screen, so I'm hoping there might be some more advancements or just some additional things that can really help there. But either way, you're also seeing that this isn't certainly perfect by any means. There are some visual glitches and such, which are going to happen on here, but this is also a more buggy build of the game since it was the initial one that released. Finally, I also want to show you one which does not work. So this might be an issue you'll run into as well. This here is Clockwork Night 2, which we can try and boot up. Here we got the button combination, so everything's looking good. So far we have everything booting up, and it seems to be really hopeful looking just because I had the first one working so well. But if we press the start button, which is going to be the options button here, you can wait for it. Oh, here we go. So part two, let's go ahead and jump into that. And there we go. Unfortunately, this one crashed. So that's a little bit heartbreaking. I can play the first Clockwork Night with 
seemingly minimal issues, but Clockwork Knight 2, at least my dump of it, does not seem to work on here. So again, that's something that I'm hoping in the future here we'll see less of. But either way, that is about it for this. I'm going to delete this just because it doesn't work, but there you go. We have Sega Saturn games of all systems, Saturn games here on the PlayStation 4 working. So this is something I was pretty impressed and excited to see. Anyways, that is about it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoy this video. Hopefully it helped out. If it did, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like this video, a dislike is perfectly fine as well too. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.